Why would I ever go into business with somebody that can't be consistent? How you do one thing is probably how you do everything. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Steve Holbrook. And before we get started, please remember at the end of this episode, please make sure to like it, share it, comment, send it some love, and we will continue to bring high quality YouTube episodes. Today, we're talking about how to get business off Instagram, how to use Instagram as a business. Look, I wanna let you know that using Instagram for business is not a get rich quick. If anything, it feels like a get rich slow. But when I got serious about social media about five years ago, I knew that it was going to take me at least five years of consistency to get it off the ground. And I'll tell you what, today, fast forward to today, probably 90 to 95% of my business comes through social media one way or another. It's either how I'm introduced to the prospect or how somebody else refers me to a prospect all in all. Most of my business, most of my prospects comes through social media and specifically comes through Instagram. So today we're going to talk about how that works. Number one, you need to figure out what's your goal. Like what's your business? What's your outcome? What are you trying to do? Are you in a recruiting business? Are you selling product? Have you created a course that you're trying to push? You need to get very, very specific with what your outcome is. Where's the money at? Now, in the beginning, yes, you might just be building your brand. You might be, you know, just posting some pictures, but I'll tell you what, you need to know what your goal is. Even if you are at the very beginning and you have nothing going on and you just created an account, if you want to use it for business, you need to decide right now what that's going to look like. Can you tweak it along the way? Yeah. Are you going to figure some things out and make some changes on your goal? Yeah. But if you don't set a goal, there's no way that you're going to ever get even close so what you want on the business side through Instagram. So I want you to be very, very specific. I wrote down, I think it was four years ago specifically, I wrote down that I would like to get to a point within a five year period where I'm finding 30 to 50 of my best people every single year through Instagram. Now the first year or two, nothing, crickets, it was a grind, but I'll tell you what, because I had that goal, I knew exactly where I was going. I was making tweaks along the way. And now that I'm not quite where I wanna be, but I've got a huge foundation built, I can start to see those goals being actualized. So number one is you have to set your goal. What is your goal for your Instagram business account or your Instagram in terms of getting business? Number two, you have to realize that your profile and your feed are your website. Your Instagram profile and your feed are your website, or as I call it, your new website. Look, 10 years ago, you want somebody to find out what you do, you send them to your company website. I'll be honest, I don't really care about people's company websites. I haven't been to a company website in probably three years. Nobody cares what I do, and I don't really care what you do until I know who you are. So your profile and your feed are gonna tell me a lot about who you are as a person. Are you a family man? right? Are you an entrepreneur? What's your product? What's your message? So you have to realize that your profile and your feed are your website. So you have to be very careful about the things that you put on there. You can't expect to drive business through Instagram. If your profile is not even complete, there's no, there's, there, there's no attachments at the end. There's no website from Instagram and there's no more information. There's no call to action. There's no link tree. So you want to make sure that your profile is set up in a way where I can get an idea of who you are and in your profiles where there's going to be some call to actions, some links, uh, and I'll do another video on how that works. But then your feed, your feed are the actual pictures and videos that are sitting on your Instagram account. So when somebody searches you up and looks at you, they're able to click on some of your videos and learn a lot about who you are, which is eventually going to funnel in to your business. The third thing, don't delete all of your pictures all at once. Nothing screams, I'm brand new to business and I have no idea what I'm doing more than somebody who goes and deletes 200 of their pictures and starts over from scratch. When I see that, I ask myself, what were you doing prior to your business that was so bad that you had so little credibility with that you had to d delete all your pictures? I have not bought a service and I have not followed anybody important 
that has deleted all their pictures and started over with one or two pictures. That is the absolute worst thing that you can do. Now, here's what I do. In the beginning, when I wanted to change my brand, change my identity, first of all, if you have any pictures on there or videos on there that are counter business or extremely controversial or they were part of your old life, yeah, get rid of the ones that are offensive to people. But every time I posted a new video or posted a new picture, every time I post one, I go ahead and I delete two or three on the back end from the beginning. So you're adding and you're subtracting. You're adding and you're subtracting. Don't just subtract all at once and start fresh. To me, it, it, it again, it screams that you're brand new in business, have no idea what you're doing, and that you were a completely different person six months ago. That's not somebody that I necessarily want to be in business with. Even if you're a really good person, right? Perception is nine tenths of the law. So remember, don't delete all your pictures at once. It shows the evolution. You want people to see the evolution. You don't want to be perfect necessarily today. Not that you'll ever be perfect, but my videos, as soon as I post them, I look at them, I go, oh man, I could have done better, but that's okay. Because I look back on videos that I did six months to a year ago and I go, wow, I've really come a long way. You know who else thinks that? People that are checking out your Instagram account. People want to see the evolution. Number four, start to dial in your niche and dial in your brand. What's your niche? What's your brand? Who are you? Who are you targeting? Are you targeting moms between the age of 30 and 45 years old? Are you targeting single men between 18 and 25? What's your niche? What's your market? Yes, in the beginning, it's good to you know generalize, but at some point, if you wanna specifically target a segment of people for business, you need to figure out not only what's your goal, but who's your niche? Who's your target? Write it down. What are things that are important to those people? Nobody's gonna go and buy your course if you're targeting to 12 year old girls, right? Or that's sorry, if you're catering to 12 year old girls on Instagram because that's who you feel comfortable catering towards, right? Yet your courses that you're selling are real estate courses for you know people that have a real estate license. There's a huge disconnect. What's your brand? What's your niche specifically? Figure out what that is so that when you start targeting people for business or people start inquiring about your business, about your service, you're attracting the right kinds of people to that. Number five, give, give, give. Give, give, give. You have to give, give, give way more than you take, way more than you expect. I hear all the time from people on Instagram. Oh, I'm not gonna post as much. People aren't engaging. People that know me are watching my stories and not replying. Look, if you started to get on social media just so you could get positive feedback from people that you care about, you got on it for the wrong reason. If this is some, if this is about vanity, if this is about how amazing you think you are, if this is about you need to hear 30 or 40 amazing things from people that you think care about you every day, and that's gonna fuel you to drive your Instagram and grow your business, you're completely missing the entire message. You should never expect even anybody to comment. Anybody that comments on your stuff is a blessing. So stop expecting people to do things, especially things that you aren't necessarily willing to do for yourself, for other people. How many comments are you putting on other people's posts a day? How many people are you engaging with? Honestly, it should be a hundred to one. You should put a hundred com comments out every single day for every one comment that you expect. The world doesn't owe you anything. Nobody owes you anything. You have to go and get it. And if you're gonna complain, about how people aren't engaging or aren't this or aren't that because you've been posting every day for only two and a half, three years. You've only made a thousand posts over three years and you expect the whole world to cater to you. You should just probably get into a different business because you have completely the wrong mindset or you can stay in the business and change your mindset. Those are really the two options. So give, 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 give until one day you wake up and you built a community of givers on your page. That's gonna be the key. Number six, build your story. Build your story. People wanna follow a story. People love watching Netflix series. People love watching movies. And the best Netflix series that I've watched and the best movies that I've seen are the ones that have a great story. Sometimes it's funny, right? Sometimes it's sad. Sometimes there's a lot of suspense. You wanna build your story. People wanna follow your journey. Your Instagram page, kind of like your website now, it's, 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 it's basically, it's your storyboard. People want to see the storyboard, where you started, 
right? Where you came from, your journey now, where you wanna go, the ups, the downs, it's your storyboard. The best Instagram influencers that I follow aren't the ones that just get up there and do a freaking dance in their bikini every single week. Most of those people came from money. Most of those people didn't have to work for anything in their life. They just hopped on an Instagram account, they post all these pictures of them half naked and they get big. Stop comparing yourself to those people. Those people don't really have a business. They just wanna get Instagram famous and they're gonna make a lot of money on the back end by selling product. That's not a strategy, right? That's a one in a million. Stop looking at the lottery winners of social media and expecting to be those people. I always expected to have to work hard. I always expected that I was gonna to have to pay a bigger price than most people to get big. And you know what? That's the way you need to be thinking. So make it a story, make it a journey. People should be following the evolution. You should tie some of your videos in now to some things that you were commenting on a week or two ago. So that somebody's watching your video now, they'll go back and watch the one from a week or two ago, right? Your stories on your, on your Instagram stories, they can also be the evolution of you. I wanna follow the story. I wanna follow your journey. I love myself a good story. So your Instagram account should be your journey, should be about your story along the way. Number seven, be vulnerable when talking about your product in your business. Be vulnerable when you're talking about your product in your business. Look, if you're trying to sell a course or you're trying to sell a concept or a business on Instagram long term, that's what you that's what you would want people to take action on. It can't be every feed post. It can't be every story. You got to get people a break. You know, every once in a while, once or twice a week, depending on how much you're posting, if you're posting all the time, once or twice a week, yeah, you're gonna talk about your product. You're gonna talk about your business. The best way to do it is tie it into a story and be vulnerable. For example, when I talk about my business and I talk about, man, it's so great to be an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I'm so blessed to be a business where, you know, we attract great people and hey, by the way, I'm looking for some good people. You also wanna tie in the fact that, look, when I started a business, I was 23 years old. I was flat broke. I was hanging around the wrong people. And man, I just wanted to be somebody, right? Can anybody relate, right? Feeling left out, getting picked on, always, always looking for the best opportunity. Always wanted to, to climb the ladder, but you know what? Never had to, I never had that opportunity. And then when I got sick with Crohn's disease, I hit rock bottom. That's how you should be tying in your story. That's how you should be tying in your product. Let's say you have a product that's, that's a skin cream. But the reason you sell it is because when you started using it, it got rid of your eczema, got rid of your psoriasis. We'll talk about that. Listen, I was a kid that had terrible skin, right? I had eczema. I was self-conscious. I didn't love who, how, who I was. I didn't love how I looked. I know that wasn't a great way to think, but what I found was that when I found a product that when I applied it to my skin, not only did it clear up my skin, but it made me feel confident again, right? It made me, it helped me step, step into the best version of me. Are you selling your product like that? Are you telling your story like that? You need to tie in the vulnerability. Why did you join the real estate firm that you joined, right? Why are you selling the product that you sold? You got to get super vulnerable at times strategically, and that's going to tie the emotion into your product or into your business. And what's going to happen is you're going to have an easier time, right? Selling to people when it's emotional. Number eight, be direct when you're approaching people. If you're gonna be soliciting people or direct messaging people or reaching out to people to either try and get them in your course or try and get them to be a part of your business, be direct with them. The worst thing is when people reach out to me and they're DMing me and they, they're like almost pretending like they wanna be my friends, like we're gonna like all of a sudden start hanging out and we're gonna have barbecues even though they live on the other side of the world. Look, if we've been following each other for a bit and we've been engaging on each other's posts, and you want to inquire with me on whether I'd be interested uh, on something, just be direct. Just hit me up in, the, in, the, in my direct messages, chat a little bit and say, hey, listen, man, you know, I just want to be up front. My company's expanding. I'm looking to get in front of a few good people. I have no idea if you'd be a fit. I have no idea if the product would be a fit, but I'd love to run a couple ideas by you, right? I see you're in the Calgary area. I see you're an influencer or I see you're in business. I see you just got on Instagram. You only have four or 500 followers, but I'd love to run some ideas by you. I noticed that you use skin cream. I noticed that you talk about business. I noticed that you read good books. I'd love to run a few ideas by you and then take it away. I have no idea if it'd be for you, but I'd love to hop on a call with you, five, 10 minutes, show you what it is that I do. And if you like what you see, great. If not, you can send me some referrals. Awesome. Be direct, right? Be direct. Here's the goal. You're supposed to be building a community of like-minded people. 
So you're building a community of like-minded people. Not everybody that you follow or engage with is going to be a part of your business. And you shouldn't expect that. You should be building a community of like-minded people, of positive people, all walks of life. Right? That, this big community that you're building because you're giving, 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 giving. You got great messages. You're positive. But you got a product and you got a business on the back end. And then what you're going to do is as you start building relationships online, you're going to strategically reach out to some people and say, listen, I've been following your journey for four or five months. And, you know, I see that you're, you know, you're an active mom or, you know, you're crushing it at your job or you're really good at real estate. Let me ask you a question. Are you totally locked into what you're doing or are you keeping your, are you keeping your options open? Be direct. Right? Don't tiptoe around it. Don't waste a bunch of time on, on 19 direct message conversations just to try and be someone's friend. So as soon as they say no, they're not interested, you like, you're gone out of their life. That's so cheesy. Don't be that person. Okay? So be direct when you're approaching people. So build the community. But if you're going to reach out to somebody directly, tell them why you're reaching out. And be a bit vulnerable. Tie it in. And you know what? You're going to find some good people. You're going to get some people into your courses if that's what your goal is. Number nine, be consistent. You gotta be consistent. I look at consistency more than anything. You know, most people think that people are judging their video quality or their message. Listen, yes, the message matters, obviously, right? Your captions are important. Who you are as a person is important. But you know what I value the most? Assuming you're a good person, you have integrity. You know what I value the most? Consistency. Are you consistent? Are you posting three, four times a week? Or are you the kind of person that hasn't posted since October, yet you're trying to solicit people to buy your product or get into your course? Why would I ever go into business with somebody that can't be consistent? How you do one thing is probably how you do everything. So if you can't be consistent with posting on your social media and that's how you're trying to lure people into your business or your product, that just screams somebody who's just in it to make money even if I buy your product, what's the follow-up going to be like? What's the communication going to be like? It, I just get the impression that if I buy your product, it's one and done. I can never get a hold of you because you're not on social media that often. You're not being consistent. Consistency means so much to people that are watching your stuff, following your stuff, and potential clients and potential prospects down the road. And number 10, my final point, you got to be patiently dissatisfied. So you have your goal, you understand your niche, you're being consistent, you understand the formula, you're give, 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 right? You're reaching out to people, but you're being direct. You're not wasting anybody's time. And you're doing it every day or every other day on the dot, but you're patiently dissatisfied. It's never gonna be enough. It's never gonna go fast enough. You're never gonna have enough followers. You're never gonna have enough clients. If you're ambitious like me, it's never gonna be enough. That's why you got to set goals, these small milestones along the way that you can knock down. So it'll give you, it'll give you win. Don't just be dissatisfied. You're not at 50,000 followers. Celebrate getting to a thousand, celebrate getting to 2000. Don't be dissatisfied. You have nobody in your course. Celebrate the first five, celebrate the first 10. Don't be dissatisfied. You haven't recruited 20 people a year off Instagram yet. Celebrate the first five, set a goal. I want to get five personal recruits off Instagram between now and the end of the year and be dissatisfied, which is okay to be dissatisfied. It means you're, you're ambitious, but be patient. Don't quit. Don't change the strategy. Don't put the ax down because you've hit the tree a hundred times and the tree hasn't fallen down. You got to keep swinging the ax. You got to keep swinging the ax and you might have to change the angle of the ax. You might have to apply more pressure. You might have to get to bring in some mentorship, but you have to keep being consistent. You have to keep swinging it. And as long as you know what the goal is, as long as you know what your target market is, as long as you're consistent with your message, it's just a matter of time. You know what the key is? Keep doing it. Most people that got into social media around the same time that I did, right? Everybody was going to get big on social. You know what I did? I just out consistent them. You know what I did? I was just more consistent than them. While everybody's getting off social media and I'm taking a break and blah, 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 blah. Perfect. More room for the hustlers, more room for the grinders. When the whole world is screaming, social media is the future. There's people that aren't posting. There's people that are getting off of it. You know what that means? More market share. That's just people giving up along the way. That's like running a 20 mile race and people quitting at a mile, five miles, eight miles. They're condemning the race at 10 miles even though it's a 20 mile race. You gotta be in it for the long haul. 
Getting business off Instagram is not a get rich quick. It's a get rich slow. But if you build it right, you'll build yourself a foundation. See, Instagram is like a pyramid. If you can get to the top of the pyramid, you get on top of the algorithm, you get a good following, even if it's five, 6,000 followers, you build that community. Once you build that community and you get above the, and you get on top of the algorithm and your stuff is getting pushed out, right? Or you build the community big enough where you're getting engagement into your business or onto the courses. Once you get to that point, you can get over the hump. Most people never get over the hump, which means there's more room for you and there's more room for me. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Listen, please comment, please like, please share, please give it some love, and we will continue to bring this kind of content to you every single week. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome week. We'll see you later.